Hey, thanks for coming to 1500ESPN.com. I'm Derek Wetmore. I'm going to share with you my five thoughts from Thursday's Twins-Angels game. A 3 nothing win for the Minnesota Twins, finally snapping that four-game losing streak and stopping the Angels' seven-game win streak. Let's go through five thoughts quickly today. I've got a podcast to get off to. Thought number one, it starts with Irvin Santana. He was great through eight innings, just 91 pitches, very economical start for Irvin Santana. Now, that makes three out of four of his starts since coming back from his 80-game steroid suspension. Uh, Three out of four starts have been very good for Santana. The one was a bit of a clunker, his second start back. But since the break, uh, two good starts, one in Oakland, now one in Anaheim. And Santana's looking like he's going to be a force down the stretch for the Twins. Uh, He got a lot of swinging strikes on Thursday, 21, I believe, and he also struck out seven batters, all swinging and missing at that slider. That's his best pitch, and uh, as I mentioned, I think he'll be a big component for the Twins going forward in their starting rotation. Thought number two is the decision to remove Santana then, because, I mean, 91 pitches through eight innings, and he's looking great against the Angels, but manager Paul Molitor decided to go to his lights-out closer, Glenn Perkins, who got Mike Trout, Albert Pujols, Eric Ibar, in succession to close out the game. Perkins moves ahead of Eddie Gordado on the Twins' all-time saves list. He moved into third place with that save number uh, 117, I want to say. It's either 117 or 118. Um, Impressive uh, company to chop down for Perkins. Of course, going through uh, the best player in baseball and then Albert Pujols, who's got 29 home runs on on the season so far. That's a strong Angels lineup, and the Twins saw that in the first two games of the series. So to take game number three, I think, was important. I don't disagree with Molitor's decision to take Santana out. I think I might have left Santana in to try and complete the shutout, but I think it's a positive sign for the Twins and their fans that Paul Molitor doesn't really care about conventional baseball thinking, which might have suggested to leave Santana out. Molitor prefers to just win the games, give his team the best chance to do so, and and it's hard to argue going to a lights-out closer like Perkins. Thought number three, I wrote about this on the website. You can check that out at 1500ESPN.com. The Twins need to add a late-inning reliever. I think that should be priority number one at the trade deadline. Yes, they need to upgrade shortstop, but they can probably do that in-house with either Eduardo Escobar or Eduardo Nunez. And yes, they could upgrade catcher. I think that'll be expensive. I wrote about that on the website too. Go check out both of those columns at 1500ESPN.com. Thought number four, Brian Dosha got a rare day off. He's the Twins' leadoff hitter and best player. Molitor apparently just wanted to rest Dozier, and I think we'll see some more of that in the second half here. Uh, Not only for Brian Dozier, but also for Torrey Hunter. I'd speculate to see a few more bench days and DH days in Torrey Hunter's future. Um, That is part of Molitor's plan to sort of um, schedule in rest so that players can stay fresh, stay healthy, stay productive in the second half of the season. Aaron Hicks batted leadoff in Dozier's absence. That makes some sense to me. I could see Aaron Hicks being actually a serviceable leadoff hitter against left-handed pitchers, even when Dozier is in the lineup. How about a lineup? I wrote out this top six in my five thoughts column. Aaron Hicks, Joe Maurer, Brian Dozier, Miguel Sano, Trevor Plouffe, Torrey Hunter. That looks like a pretty good top six to me. And against left-handed starters, I'd be curious to see if the Twins would uh, experiment with that. Maybe they just go back to Brian Dozier by the time he is ready to return to the lineup, which I would expect to see as soon as the Yankees series starts on Friday at Target Field. Thought number five, Trevor Plouffe hit the home run. Three-run shot. I gave Irvin Santana and the Twins all the offense they would need. Plouffe's wife, Olivia, is expecting any day now. I believe she was due on Saturday with the couple's first child. I wouldn't be surprised to see Plouffe take a short maternity leave here at some point, but uh, no word on that as yet. Uh, Plouffe, obviously an important player to the Twins. They'll miss him for the time that he is gone, but Miguel Sano could play some third base, or Eduardo Escobar could play some third base, or Eduardo Nunez could play some third base. Uh, They'll be covered, and of course, as I've said often on these videos, in my Five Thoughts columns, in our Touch Em All podcast, There are some things that are more important than baseball, and Trevor Plouffe is about to find that out, I think. Um, But anyways, he hit the home run. He provided all the offense that the Twins would need against Garrett Richards and uh, the Angels on Thursday. So they'll come home now after a bit of a difficult West Coast road trip and try to get things going again back at Target Field. That'll do it for this Five Thoughts column. Check out the website, 1500ESPN.com, for all our Twins coverage. 
and, and check out my five thoughts column from Thursday's game. Until next time, I appreciate you watching this video. We'll catch you next time. I'm Derek Wetmore. See you later.